I guess I would like to tell my story. The unfiltered story. Which, for a lot of people, has been um, rare. People who knows me, they probably know I'm quite um, selective uh, of my surroundings. I think it's easier to talk about um, my life journey now that I can reflect back on a chapter that's close. It really has come down to the final part. This is it, this is the moment. 38-year-old Suzanne Pettersson, all in her talented fingers. Born and raised in Norway. My nickname is Tuta. Uh, I've always been Tuta. My mom thought Susanne was a bit harsh on a little girl. I didn't know it was going to stick her whole life. And she, everyone just say Tuta. So actually, I made it up. The world knows Susanne from being a professional golfer. And then she is very, very strict and very determined. As a daughter, she is soft, nice, and friendly. So the, the picture almost everybody gets from her on the golf course, the, that's quite another person when she's private. I mean, she's absolutely two different people when it comes to the athlete and the person. They don't necessarily see her as this uniquely generous and warm-hearted and extremely funny. I mean, we can laugh until we pee in our pants. The way I was brought up was a very natural, a lot of outdoor activities, very active family. My mom and dad uh, very into sports, which kind of fell down on the, on the three kids. Two older brothers gives you a competitive edge from the very first heartbeat. Whatever they did, I tried to do better. For the most part, I did. She was more like a tomboy. To try to, to put her on a dress and something like that was impossible. She was a more focused child than maybe I was, and so she, she was more determined to go in one direction, whereas I wanted to try a lot more aspects of life, to put it that way. I feel like I have them to thank for who I am today, because I don't think the competitiveness is something that you learn with age. I think you almost, you're born and raised with it. In my younger days, I was a very keen golfer myself, and I want to practice. And when you have three small kids at home, Staying away, let's see, five, six hours was not very popular. So I said, OK, I go practicing, I take Susanne with me. I loved it. I thought it was the easiest thing in the world. I swung it like I'd never done anything else in my life. We would be there first thing in the morning and last ones to leave at night. Hop, 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 yeah. Oh, you're so spoiled. Sit. Now we're heading to Oslo Golf Club. Officially opens around the 17th of May, literally almost every year. Yeah, not the longest of seasons, but I guess it's a charm to that as well. So this is the range. This is where it all started. I think it was a seven iron. Uh, it was definitely not a kid's club. That's when I turned around, I thought this game was very easy. <laughs> Probably the only time I've said that uh, this game is very easy. I think I was about 12 and I, for the first time, told my dad I'm going to become the best female golfer in the world. I said, my God, that's a nice dream. That's not a dream, that's my goal. I she wrote it down. When I was 14, I wrote my own vision, future vision of how I wanted my career to go down. The crystal clear picture was, uh, me becoming the best golfer in the world and 
the path along the way. I mean, I was 14 and I was so aware of where I wanted to go. She has something special that nobody else has. And the funny thing is, when she was 14, she won her first Norwegian championship. From the age I was 13 to 18, I think I lost one tournament and I won everything else. But when I look back, I'm still annoyed by that I could lose that one tournament. <laughs> I wasn't just a junior, I also competed in women's championship from early age because I was that good and nobody really gave me too much of a competition. My final national championships for uh, ladies, <laughs> official photographer for the tournament, he called me up early in the week before the tournament started and said, can we get a shot of you with all the four trophies and I'll bring the fifth trophy, it will take a picture. I'm like, okay, I'm most likely gonna win, but it's a little bit too cocky to stand there in front of everybody, like holding five trophies and like, <laughs> he's like, well, I don't know, what's your, what's your problem? I mean, no one else is gonna win this. I'm like, I know, but we don't really have to like throw it in their face. <laughs> so now you look at yourself as a 24 seven athlete already at the age of 15, 16. Her final putt, Suzanne Pedersen's story on CBS Sports is sponsored by Dow, providing customers the materials they need to build a more sustainable tomorrow. How can Dow help turn your ideas into reality? Suzanne Pedersen. Suzanne Pedersen. Suzanne Pedersen. Suzanne Pedersen. Suzanne Pedersen for birdie. This for the win for Pedersen. Breakthrough victory for Suzanne Pedersen. Punch punt from Suzanne Pedersen. An unlikely comeback win for Suzanne Pedersen. Suzanne Pedersen wins for the 11th time on tour. Suzanne Pedersen, lot of performance. 4-0 in the Solheim Cup matches. Suzanne Pedersen goes back to back. She is in top form. It's a European star who wins the first major in continental Europe. It has been an extraordinary performance. I've never, ever questioned my ability to become the best player. I was 14, and I was so aware of where I wanted to go. And I can read this paper today, and it's a little bit weird talking about it because I've literally checked off every single dream that I had, except one. I was never ranked number one golfer in the world. I had goals of playing Solheim Cups. 2003 was gonna be my first Solheim Cup because I was gonna be Barca Beck in Sweden. I have that on paper. By the time Barca Beck came around, that was already my second Solheim Cup. I wanted to win majors. I wanted to be the best European player. I obviously idolized Annika. She being from Sweden, I was from Norway. She kind of paved the path for me to believe that Coming from Scandinavia, you could become one of the world's best golfers. As expected, Sorenstam and Pedersen prevail, and they do it with ease. She's a fierce competitor, and I mean fierce. The adrenaline that comes down the stretch, we both share that. We both just enjoy the challenge. I pretty much noticed that right away. I'm like, hey, this is somebody that feels the same way and wants it as much as I do. Suzanne on Tuesday was so different than Suzanne on Thursday. Suzanne on Tuesday was, hey, how you doing? How's Meg? Suzanne on Thursday would walk right by you, and it was no, no disrespect. She wasn't, she just, you weren't important on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just had this incredible ability to just throw the switch. I'm probably the most laid back person off the golf course. When you come to the competitive side, you don't want people to be able to read your thoughts. In that way, that's probably why people think I'm like the scary Suzanne. All the smiles you've never seen from me on the golf course, that's probably just me trying to do the job that I want so desperately. That look that she has on the course, that she just wants to beat everyone, she always reminded me of Tiger in, in female. And to be honest, when I started on the LPGA, I was too nervous to go and say hi because I thought she had that strong personality and determination and I was a little bit scared. Stop it! Oh. 
There's always been an intimidating factor to Susan. You're kind of scared of her at first. There just isn't a competitor like Susan. Come on! She wants to win every time she tees it up, and you know you have to play your A game against her. You know she can get in your mind with how she is out on the golf course, but at the same time she has a whole different side where she's making dirty comments and jokes. You know a lot of people just see the golf side. First image I have of Susan playing. She was cursing, and it was, I think it was a wedge going all over the green on the other side. That was the first image I had of Suzanne, and I loved it. Suzanne brought intensity, um, you know, competitiveness. You know, she, she was always sponsored by Nike. You know, their whole thing is just do it, and she just did it. Suzanne has 15 LPGA victories and two major championships, has an 18, 12, and six record in the Solheim Cup. She has Hall of Fame credentials. She is one of the best players of her generation. In Norway, you know, we, we really like winter sport because we're really good at it. But it's not too many countries doing those sports. I'm very impressed with golf and tennis and the major championships there. That's real sports people. And that's really hard to achieve. And no Norwegian had ever done that, not even close. And then Susan Petersen, Tutta, came along and did just that. She's ended up being one of the most important bearers of the top sport culture in Norway. That's pretty amazing. But still, in my eyes, you know, Susan is the greatest sports person coming out of this country ever. There's always a time where, like, you feel a bit lonely. You can go out and win tournaments. You come back to the hotel. You look around the room. There's just no one there. It's you and the trophy. It's quite an empty feel. It took me a while to kind of get used to having someone by my side. And the best thing was actually to be able to share what I do with someone that I love. 2017, we got married. It wasn't easy for me. I've been living a selfish life. It was all about me. <laughs> That's the biggest journey of all. Golf being everything she had in her life till she met Christian in 2013, and you can tell how happy she was. And then finally, when she announced that she was pregnant, I saw a lot of things change. The last week before I was about to head home for my 12-week checkup, I all of a sudden had a massive bleeding. And you have no clue what's going on. Um, you can only start pray that things are going to work out. Week in, week out, every day was like this. It was so rough. I could, I could never really kind of breathe and kind of enjoy being pregnant. I thought it was the roughest thing I'd ever been a part of. And it was out of my control. And I sat down with my mom and dad and Christian uh, one night and I said, I don't know what's the purpose of me playing golf this year. August came around, Herman was born. He came in a heartbeat into our lives, and it was a blessing. I gotta say, the first moment I held him, I was always, I don't know what to feel. I mean, it's like you've just been thrown into something that you have no practice of. But at the same time, it felt so natural. That has changed her as an individual, and she changed her relationships to mom and dad, the game. There is life outside the game. There is something after that has made her even better. It's like the rose has just, it's blossoming. Just reflecting on life and the perspective and my heart was somewhere else. My ego was gone. She's been 
an ego trip times 1,000 for her whole life. It's been all about her. And now it's completely different. Obviously, when you get a child, it changes everything, doesn't it? First of all, she got herself. And her old ego has to move away because she doesn't fit into this picture. And she doesn't want to because she's now so determined to, to make a good life for, for his son, the dog, and for Christian. So now she's so happy just being a mom. Go say hi. Go say hi to him. Ah, a quack quack. What's he, what's he, and quack quack. Life was great and I had no rush getting back into like the competitive life of golf. There was only one date where I had to play golf. The last thing I wanted to do was embarrass myself. I hadn't played competitive golf for 16 months, literally. By the time I got to Dow, I felt like I was as prepared as I could possibly be. Familiar face back again, Jim, at the 13th. Yeah, just had a baby boy. He's excited about playing. Of course, playing with Solheim captain Katrina Matthew. And that'll help. Nice birdie at the 13th. Me and Caroline Headwell got to play with her and, and Beanie at the Dow. And I was very happy for that pairing. Of course, Solheim Cup captain. Only two months away from it. Yeah. Glenn Eagles. Anna was like, She's actually playing really good. She's on our team. I mean, she has to play. I'm delighted and honored to announce my four picks as Celine Boutier from France, Bronte Law, England, Suzanne Peterson, Norway, and Jody Yurt Shadoff. Her final putt, Suzanne Peterson's story on CBS Sports is sponsored by Dow providing customers the materials they need to build a more sustainable tomorrow. How can Dow help turn your ideas into reality? On the tee from Europe, Suzanne Peterson. When Katrina Matthews made Suzanne the captain's pick for this 2019 Solheim Cup team, Suzanne had played two tournaments in two years. That tells you the respect and the belief that Katrina Matthews had in Suzanne actually was perhaps the best player for Europe, but now she's back. When she hit her drive off of 18 on that last day in the singles match against Marina Alex, as she's walking off to tee. All of a sudden, here comes Beanie, as calm as she is. I'm like, what's up, Beanie? She goes, you know why I picked you? <laughs> I'm like, I get it, Beanie. You don't have to tell me. It's getting quite close. And that was exactly but there was nobody that Katrina would have rather had in that situation than Suzanne. With beanies, whatever you want to call it, pep talk, I started to realize what I was in for. I hear people in the crowd just saying she's got this to win, the cup. It really has come down to the final, but this is it. This is the moment. 38-year-old Suzanne Pettis all in her talented fingers. Hearing in the radios that Suzanne has this putt to win, I like, still get goosebumps thinking about it. You know, I'm actually getting goosebumps just thinking of it. Um, it was so exciting to watch. I mean, it was like, if you want to script something, you probably could not even script it as well. How many times as a kid you imagine yourself having a putt like this, and how about at the Solheim Cup? I was standing on the fringe, basically, with a few other teammates. And I was like, they probably couldn't have got a better person to hit this putt. As I read the putt, I called in Mikey. I couldn't see much. There was no break to it. I said, Mikey, this is left center. I had a pretty good feeling when I read the putt with her that, that it was going in. I don't know why. I don't often have that feeling. But I just thought, this is probably, probably going to go in dead center. At that point, it did feel like I'd been away for two years. To deal with those emotions, it was nerve-wracking. I might have looked calm, but 
I remember the only thing I was thinking as I was taking the club away was like straight back. Like that was like my kind of go-to feel with my part, like straight back, don't drop it inside. I could hear the TV announcers. As I'm over the pot, and here is to Sam Pedersen, her ninth appearance in the Solheim Cup. Suzanne Pedersen in her ninth Solheim Cup with this to win the trophy. I know before the ball goes in, I am already like this because I could see that the ball was gonna go in. A foot out, the putter is in the ground. I can see the ball going in straight in the middle. Suzanne Pedersen wins the cup for Europe. When she made the putt, I don't even know how to describe it. It was, it was amazing. I was just like running up the 18th fairway. Everyone it was just like so many people. Just take her and I just run towards the green with all these other people. It was crazy. She made it. I got chills. It was amazing, honestly, to watch. I can't believe this is so unbelievable. Never question Sam Pedersen under pressure. They had to win the last three matches, and they've done it. They've won all three. That was her moment, and yeah, it was very, very special. It was quite emotional. <laughs> Yeah, that was just incredible. I mean, she kind of dropped the mic, so to speak. I cannot imagine how she personally felt other than just, wow, this is cool, I did it. I mean, when the putt dropped, I have to say it was more a massive relief, more than anything else. I had answered all of the questions that I had. Would I still have what it takes to deliver when it matters the most? Could I come back as a mom? I mean, all these questions were answered right there on the 18th. And that's all I needed to be able to think, this is it. Nothing is ever gonna beat this moment. So why continue? And that's when I just realized, as soon as I saw him and I held him, he's here. And that means the world to me. My mom and dad was there. My brother was there. I could never have thought that I could share a moment like this with everyone that's meant everything to me along the way, I had nothing left in the tank. It was amazing. It was a perfect ending to her career. I actually hoped that they would win and she would quit, but I, then she got to play the main role. That was even better, so what's the upside of continuing then? She never gave up, and this was her goal, and she reached her goals more than you could expect. She comes up the alley, walking up. She just looks at me. She says, this is a good time, right? And I said, yeah, you couldn't choose a better ending. There is no possible way. I think this is it. This is me and Solheim Cup forever, and this is the chapter close to an end. We didn't know. Just some of the golfers came up and said, Mona, I think she said that, that was it. I said, what? because I wasn't sure, because I knew she loved this life so much. Suzanne, is this really it for you? Yeah, uh, I think this is a perfect the end for a professional career. Um, it doesn't get any better. And, uh... <laughs> we didn't want her to stop. You want her out here, and this is her being done. You know, you're not going to see her compete anymore, and um, I'll miss that. It's nice to be able and maybe you're fortunate to be able to leave on your own terms, to be able to set your own chapter, to be able to, you know, write the last sentence and just putting a period. The fact that the last stroke that she ever made as a professional golfer will be the final putt on the final hole of the last person left on the golf course at the 2019 Solheim Cup to win it for Europe, that could not have been a better bookend to her career. We are so proud of her. And I can see that it's over now, and she's so happy, and that's what makes us happy. She's a good kid. It's only 
after the Solheim that I've, for the first time in my life, reflected back on something that I've achieved. The first really emotional moment that I had was Sunday night at the Solheim. I got into the room, it was dark. I could hear Herman sleep peacefully. I sat down in one of those comfy chairs at the Hotel of Glen Eagles, and I pulled up my phone. I, haven't even, I hadn't even looked at it once since the pot dropped. And I look at it, and it's just, it had ex exploded with messages, with phone calls, starting to scroll through, and I'm like, almost started to realize what I've just done. It was overwhelming of uh, feelings that just hit me, and I was start to go. I was sitting there in the chair. I was like afraid Herman was gonna wake up. The moment I sat down in that chair, and I looked at my phone, well knowing that my biggest achievement was right behind me sleeping, it was this priceless.